We've looked at how to add a simple focus effect for an input on the properties panel, but that's just scratching the surface. Let's take a look at how we can take input states and validation to the next level using components. In my project, I've got a simple form here with a text input for an email address and a submit button. But let's take a quick look at what we're trying to accomplish here. We want to end up with an input with a placeholder as the default state. Then when we click, we'll enter a focus state and the label will move up above the input. Then after we type something and click away, we want to have a defocus or blur state where the styling is like the default state, but the label remains up above the input. Then finally, we want an invalid state in case what's typed in the input is not a valid email address, but also to revalidate the text once it's fixed. Let's build it. Back in the project, I'll start by selecting the entire label frame, right-clicking, and choosing Create Component. I'm going to start by making a few changes to the primary variant before we create the others. Let's start by giving it a more descriptive name, like Default. Now I'm going to change the height of this frame to Fixed, to preserve this extra space up here when we move the label around. Then I'll set the email label to Absolute Positioning, so we can move it around freely. You'll notice the input jumped up to the top. That's because the parent frame is a vertical stack and the input's position type is relative, meaning it follows the flow of the stack that it's in. We could set the input to absolute positioning or have it align with the bottom of the stack it's in by changing the stack to distribute from end rather than start, which for a vertical stack means from bottom rather than top. That's better. Next, I'm going to delete the placeholder text for the input and instead move the label text box down onto the input to behave as our placeholder. That way we can animate the label moving back and forth. I'll increase the font size slightly to 14 and make sure the text box is inset evenly on the top, bottom, and left. Another thing worth noting is that my input field has no focus effect. We're going to create a variant for the focus state instead. And I think we're all good for our primary variant. I'll click to add our second variant and rename this one focus. Now in the focus state, the user will have just clicked or tapped into the field to type something. So we'll need to move the placeholder text back up and out of the way. And I'll bring the size back down to 12 pixels while we're at it. Before I continue on with styling, let's actually pause here for a moment. The layout of this focus state is actually exactly the same as the layout I want for our blur and invalid states. So while we're here, we might as well create a couple more variants and name one of them blur and the other one invalid. Now we can style each one. Since a couple of variants are gonna have borders around the inputs, we can make our animations extra smooth by making sure that every variant has a border. That way the property itself isn't snapping on and off. So I'll select the input of the primary variant, add a border, increase the width to two pixels, and for the color, I'll drag the alpha all the way down to 0%. Now for the focus state. I'm just gonna select the input, select the border property, and change the color to blue. And similarly for the invalid state, I'll select the input, select border property, and make it red. And I'll go one step further with this one and select the text and make that red as well to help grab the user's attention. Great, now we have our four states. We just need to add the interactions, which we can do on the primary variant and the interactions will be inherited by the other variants. I'll start by selecting the input field, then drag the interaction handle to the focus variant. Now, because this interaction is triggered by an input field, we get some input specific options here for when to trigger the interaction. In this case, we're linking to our focus variant, so naturally we'll trigger this on focus. I'll leave the value set to any, which means we'll go to the focus variant whether the user has typed into the field or not. Let's repeat this for the blur state. Select the input, drag over to our blur variant, and we'll choose to trigger on blur. You might be thinking, what the heck does blur mean? In this context, it means not focused. See, 
So why do we need a dedicated blur state when we already have a state for when the input isn't focused? We have that first variant of the input, right? Yes. But if the user has typed something in the field, we don't want the label to move back down and overlap with what the user has typed. Thus, we have our dedicated blur state for when the input becomes defocused and a value is set. Perfect. Let's actually preview this from the primary variant. When I click, there's our focus variant with the blue border. And when I set a value and click away, there's our blur variant that keeps the label up and out of the way. There's just one little issue. Our blur variant is only triggered if there's a value in the field. If I delete what I typed, then click away, nothing happens. Easy fix. Let's get out of the preview and select the input and link it to the primary variant. This time we'll say blur, but only when the value is empty. That way it'll return to the initial state if nothing is typed in the field. Let's preview it again. Now clicking goes to the focus variant and clicking away from the empty field goes right back. And of course, clicking, typing something and clicking away goes to our special blur state, just like it did before. Let's exit the preview and link up our last bit of logic, validation. To do this right, we have to consider two sides of validation. What happens when a user tries to submit invalid data and what happens when the user fixes it. First, we'll create the interaction linking to our invalid variant. And for this one, we'll choose, you guessed it, invalid. When we preview this, I can type some text that is not a valid email address. And Framers Logic gives me the benefit of the doubt that I'm not done typing yet. But if I were to click submit or click away, the invalid value triggers our invalid variant. But now if I fix my mistake, we're still in the invalid state. Let's get out of the preview and fix that by selecting the input in the invalid variant, dragging an interaction over to the focus variant, and setting this to trigger on valid. All set. Now when we preview and end up in that invalid state, fixing the error will revalidate on the fly and return us to the regular state. That's it. Now you know how and why to turn an input into a component and how to use variants to power custom focus, blur, invalid, and valid states with built-in validation logic that updates in real time as a visitor types in a field. Now head to Framer and create some super slick forms of your own.